Hi there and welcome along. My name is Catherine Wilson and this is the Work Life Show from Staff Traits. I'm joined today by someone who has just recently started a business um, along with his co-founder, a business called Beacon and Armour and his name is Ash Stevenson. Welcome along to the Work Life Show. Hey, so good to be here. Thank you for having me. No, it's great to have you. Um, so first question, all about your business. What is it you guys do and how long have you been a business for? So uh, we've almost been together now for like two years. Uh, Beacon and Arm was founded actually, uh, it's quite a funny story, like uh, Zach Hill and I were working full time for this uh, for this charity and uh, this charity has like uh, buddy lunches so when when like a new person comes into the company you get paired with someone that's been there a while and Zach Hill came into the company and he was paired with me so we went for lunch and uh, we just clicked um, I think it's it's incredible when you find someone who kind of like understands the way that you think and and kind of like finds finds you funny as well do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. like like you got the same sort of humor and stuff and uh, and yeah like kind of like entre entrepreneurial stuff was very much in the conversation and uh, I remember once uh, we, we decided to go for a jack of potato and um, and that's how Beacon and Armour started actually we we um, so we both had our jack of potatoes and then we said hey bro like wouldn't it be funny if we started a company called Jack of Potato and like we just sell like cool jackets and that's how that's how Beacon and Armour started but and then uh, after that we kind of like we sat down and we actually started to speak about like values and uh, and we realized like that it had to be more than jackets and it had to be cooler than jacket potatoes <laughs> as a brand um, so yeah it's it's been such a fun journey so far um, so what was the concept for the name then how did you move away from the jacket potatoes into something a little bit more cooler <laughs> I should say <laughs> okay well the way that we did it was we, we we sat down and we started to speak about things that we really value you know like personally so for example we spoke about a lot of of what we've learned from British culture like heritage and and legacy and uh, high quality things like this you know that we we were like man those those are s s some really cool values that we want to keep in our company and that changed everything so like it changed where we get our, our stuff made it changed uh, like the way that we present ourselves um, and the name kind of it's interesting choosing a name for a company nowadays because you kind of have to be super creative like uh, for example um, actually this week I've been trying to f figure out a name for this uh, this other brick company that that I'm s starting which is a story for another day <laughs> but um, but yeah just trying to like think about how how you can use the word like brick creative in a, in a business name it's just so interesting it's quite challenging actually mm -hmm. um, but yeah like the way that we went about it was we kind of like started to think about these values and trying to describe them in different ways. So the word beacon is really about like leading people somewhere. It's a lighthouse, mm -hmm. right? And one of our values was storytelling. Uh, we, we, we think storytelling is like is, is really necessary in, in, our, in our culture today. Like people really need to know uh, the story behind the things that they purchase, mm -hmm. uh, it, it makes them meaningful. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, so that was that was the re the reason why we chose Beacon, and uh, and then Armor was like about protection. So how can you like lead people to these stories that are meaningful, but how can you also protect the people behind the stories? Mm -hmm. So that's behind that's. The the uh, the meaning behind the name Beacon and Armour, especially you know if you ask um, if you ask any of your friends right now you know what type where'd you get your jacket I love it if you have a story they're more likely to go and find you know something similar to what you've got 
than if, if they just said, oh, I got it in the shop down the road. Do you know what I mean? If there's an actual story behind it, that also probably helps sales, does it? Exactly. Like, um, it's the way that clothes used to be made. And, uh, and that's what, what we're trying to do is like, for example, this jumper right here is a Guernsey jumper. Now, I didn't know about this jumper. Zach Hill didn't know about this jumper. But when we spoke to some like really old British uh, families and stuff, they, they loved the Guernsey jumper because for them it was like, it was a story that was passed down the generations. And, uh, and so we decided to like look into it. And it's so cool, like in, the, in, in like the 1600s, right? Like these fishermen families on the island of Guernsey, they would uh, they would each kind of like knit their own jumper and on, this, on the top third here they would have their own like family pattern mm -hmm. and then the jumper would like be handed over to the next generation and like there's something quite special about the way that uh, people used to to wear clothes but also like hand them over and like imagine as a kid right you get this jumper mm -hmm. but it's not just like it's not just practical like it's got it's got a story behind it like your, your your dad was like out at sea he might have even been in a shipwreck do you know mm -hmm. what i mean and this and this jumper carries that story yeah. yeah yeah and that's what we love that's what we love about um about what we've learned about british history and uh and, and, and zach hill and i we really like i think one of the things we do value is is learning through everything so like I'm from South Africa, he's from Singapore, mm -hmm. but we've come and we've started like a, a British brand, British brand which yeah. is so funny. Uh -huh. But it's because I think we really value what, what we've learned here over the years. That's fantastic. And that's obviously why the business is continuing to work. Um, so more on to who you have working for you now. Do you have a, a lot of people who work for you? How many people are you in your business? Uh, it's currently just Zach Hill and myself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, we've thought about like getting some interns on board. With our jumpers, we actually worked with, uh, with a girl called Victoria and she was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why we reached out to her was because she actually like knows knitwear really well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Like when you start to uh, think about, you know, different products for your, for your company and stuff like that, you sometimes take the humble approach and realize that, that you, you don't know everything. So the way that we work is, is very collaborative. We, we want to be able to like find people that are experts in their field and then kind of like let their strengths uh, cover our weaknesses. And so we worked with Victoria. She helped us design these, these jumpers. And, uh, and then uh, with our bags, we, we worked with a bag manufacturer that, that does this like day, in, day and night. Mm -hmm. So Zachula and I are like more about finding these people uh, we're good at our own things, mm -hmm. but um, but yeah, the way that we we work pe uh, with with people and and the way that we're we're wanting to grow our team is is in that way. Yeah. So it's kind of very flexible and and, um, and fluid in in that way. So you were saying about the skills that you both bring to the company. How would they differ then? Are they similar or are they completely different? And how are you as people? Like, do you bring different skills as different people, or are they similar skills? You just support each other on that. I think the special thing about Zach and I, mm. and and I'm just so grateful for this. I, I would even call it more than just a, a, a partnership. Like we're we're like best friends, mm -hmm. and um, and we're very similar in some ways, but very different in others. Mm. Uh, I, I'm personally more of a risk taker. Like, Zach Hill is a little bit more calculated and strategic. And um, I think having both of those traits kind of work really well together, you know. Like, um, I like to call myself like a conceptual archi uh, architect because I, I feel like it's something I used to really dislike about myself in the past is I, I used to see problems everywhere. Like, and some people would find that quite negative. Like, I would keep on seeing, like, oh, that's a problem. We need to solve it. Uh, but I've realized it's actually a gift, and it's part of who I am. And so I'm very grateful for, for the fact I have this ability to kind of, like, zoom out of a, 
of a, of a situation mm-hmm. and to be able to see the cracks but then be able to also think about how I can creatively fix them. Yeah. Whereas Zach is a little bit more like on the ground and practical and and so we really complement one another one another in that way. And uh and then we've got like traits that are very similar. Like we're both passionate about branding. We love branding. And that's something that we've really tried to like deeply root into Beacon and Armor. Mm-hmm. Everything we've designed from start to finish is golden ratio. Like <laughs> we just love like we're we're geeky like that. So as you've said, you and Sakil, the co-founder of the company, are also very good friends. How do you guys manage to, you know, switch off from work and not talk about work all the time and, and still manage to be friends? Well, uh it's an interesting one. <laughs> I think um let me let me explain a little bit how we started. Uh, Beacon and Armour just in terms of like work-life balance because mm. we were both working full-time jobs in London uh, which is which is quite a full-on city and um, the thing about starting a business is like there's a lot of sacrifice that you need to make in in many different areas of your life and um, Zachiel and I both had to make that sacrifice financially but also with time so like it's difficult talking about work-life balance when you know you're working a full-time job but then you've got to start up on the side and you've got to get this thing off the ground so like we would often work into the night okay so there was a huge sacrifice then but I think it really set us up now for for the like I, I just recently started working uh, full-time for Beacon and Armour so that's like two years in Mm -hmm. but we had to make that sacrifice uh, in the beginning Uh, now I can go to gym anytime I like you know what I mean (laughs) well congratulations (laughs) on now working full time on thing on something that you're very very passionate about but um, we were speaking a little earlier about um, you as an entrepreneur and you had an interesting story to tell me about bricks oh yeah so I mentioned the bricks earlier Um, this is a new project that I, I, I recently started with my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I, I love problem solving. So, so like for me, you know, Beacon and Armor is 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 a project that I'm okay if if it's if it works out or even if it fails. Like I, I realize that I'm gonna I'm gonna learn something from this. So I'm, I like, I'm just always trying to solve problems no, ma- no matter what, but at the same time, I don't want to spread myself too thin, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but with this plastic bricks, I was, I was sat with my dad, I was in South Africa in, in February last year, 2019. And um, it's, it's summer there and we were sat on the deck and my house kind of looks over onto the ocean, on, nice. on the Atlantic Ocean. And, <laughs> it's it's a bit cold though when you put your feet in it it goes numb so anyways um and i said to my dad who's an engineer um i said dad how can we solve the plastic issues in the ocean and and then i slightly looked down from the ocean and there's a there's a township there and then i said dad like how can we solve the housing issue in the townships in south africa and it kind of clicked to me that when I was a kid, like I used to play with little plastic Lego bricks, and uh, and so yeah, that started a journey with with my dad, where we decided that we were going to try and make bricks or building material out of uh, plastic that can't be recycled, wow. and it solves so many problems, which I love. It's it's it solves job creation in South Africa, which is a huge issue. It cleans up the townships because now suddenly plastic becomes valuable. That like bottle on the floor is now like a possible brick for someone's house do you know what I mean um, and yeah like it's it, it cleans up it cleans up the the townships um, it gives people a sense of, of pride about about the place that they live and hopefully it gives people like a a, a safer place to, to to stay so so that's like a really recent project mm. uh, we're still in kind of like the, the the development stage of that 
That's so back to what you said earlier, though, about you having a problem with the fact that you often looked at the risk involved in, and you, you just saw the cracks and you looked at the problems quicker than you looked at, you know, the g- glorious parts of the business. But that also shows that you're seeing a problem that is worldwide at the minute, the, the, the plastics in our oceans, and you're, you're seeing that as a, as a potential business that's going to help many people. So that says a lot about you. Is there anything else? That you, what would you say that you particularly like about your business sense? I think I really like the fact that I'm a risk taker. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, there's a saying that says, without risk, there's no reward. And I've realized not many people like to take risks. Mm-hmm. We're quite comfortable like in our nine to fives and um, in our routines. And I think there's, there's something quite amazing about that. But at the same time, like, we need the pioneers, you know, like, think about it, how things used to work, like, hundreds of years ago when when people would be kind of, like, pioneering into, like, uncharted territory. Um, They they didn't know what they were getting themselves into. But but, uh, there's another saying that that I love as well that says, uh, pioneers always walk the paths of most resistance. If you think about it like a jungle, like, like they're there with machetes like cutting the paths and then kind of people just come in behind them and pioneers usually don't ever get the glory that's another thing as well so i've realized for myself it's like uh cool i'm pioneering some stuff and i'm trying my best to but you know even if i don't get any of the credits that's okay because usually there's people that come in behind and and really take the ideas and take it to the next level a clear example is like MySpace and Facebook. Do you know what I mean? Um, but what I've realized as well as someone who's got a little bit more of a pioneer attitude is that I like to take risks, but I need to work with people who are settlers. In order to take territory, you need to bring settlers along with you so that you can continue to take territory. Um, so, so they're not necessarily risk takers then. They are the people that want to exactly fulfill the the belief yeah i think there's like there's there's really there's value in both sides um i'm not encouraging everyone to take risks but i think it is really i think it is really important to take risks as well um you know even if you fail like like what i said earlier even if you fail it's okay because because it's not about uh, i don't think success is about something like working i think it's about actually learning from from your experience and and then using that that uh that knowledge to improve on your next venture if that makes sense improving always the failures you have to have failures in order to learn exactly how to not make them a failure yeah that's very very interesting yeah um so also very i want to ask this question i ask everybody this question what do you do in your spare time when you're not working in business how do you wind down <laughs> um i love going to the gym okay and uh that's something i kind of like recently i actually started that when i when i when i started beacon and armor as well like some of the time um i love traveling as well i think that's an awesome way to continue to be inspired uh like as as creative people we need to keep our inspiration fueled and I, I think travel is a is a great way to do that because it comes back to the learning side of things like learning from different cultures you put yourself in in situations that are uncomfortable and uh, and when you're uncomfortable I think that's where you where, where you learn a lot uh, like I was recently in India and uh, you know trying food I've never eaten before and uh, and and just speaking to the locals and going on a tuk-tuk through Mumbai where there's like no road lanes and like you think you're going to die. <laughs> like it's just so much fun. Um, I, I love it uh, in adventure. So yeah. to be honest, whether I'm like working or whether I'm uh, like just enjoying my free time, I think both of those include adventure in, in their own right. 
Brilliant. So you spoke a little bit about the jumpers. Obviously, the fabulous jumper you're wearing at the moment is from your business, but you also um, sell a lot of other items. So talk to me about the partnerships that you have worldwide and the stories behind those. Yeah, so um, I think something that's been really excited about Beacon and Armour is like, we've always kept storytelling at the core of, of what we do. So to give you an example, uh, Zach Hill and I spoke a lot about how we want to make a backpack. And we were, wa- we were walking in South Kensington one day, together we are going for lunch, classic. <laughs> and, uh, and we walked over one of the pedestrian crossings and uh, this truck, this big truck stopped for us. And it was like this amazing maroon color and it had gold typography on, on, um, on the cab. And we looked at each other, we were like, oh, because we're passionate about branding. Like, we were like, oh my gosh, who hand paints their trucks nowadays? That's insane. So on the side of the truck, there was a number and it said that the company name, which was J.R. Adams. And we were like, man, we need to speak to these people. So we sent them, a, uh, we actually called them and we spoke to this guy, um, I believe it was John on the first call that we had. And, uh, and we were like, we need to tell these guys stories. And then from that place, we were like, okay, cool. Uh, let's, let's book a ticket to Newcastle because that's where they were based. So we got on the train. See, the, the, he has this thing about investments as well because like the, tra- the train ticket to, <laughs> to Newcastle is not cheap. Yeah. And, and, and this is also about risk. Like we don't know who these people are or what they're going to be like. Um, like it's a trucking company. It could be like dead. Do you know what I mean? But when we got there, oh man, we just had the biggest smiles on our faces because we met the most amazing people. Like when we met John, I thought he was the most hipster guy I've ever met in my life. Real hipster. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and this kind of like started a journey where they, they said to us, oh, we'll d- donate you some of our truck, truck top wool and, and you guys can turn it into our products. And, and so then we partnered with M24 who actually takes truck top wool and, and turns it into backpacks. So, from start to finish, there's a story behind our products. Wow. And now someone can buy a bag and they know exactly where it's come from. And you know and the it's story. That's real behind. British. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, that's kind of how we go about creating products for Beacon and Armor. You know, the same with our mugs. Uh, we'd, we're pivoting slightly this year. We, we feel like we're going to start making more of our own products um, for, for various reasons. And, uh, we're what actually, do you want to make? Give us some we're, we're actually, exclusives. <laughs> we're actually going to be making another backpack as well. Okay. So, um, but but yeah, this one is 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 going to be like the perfect bag for for a Londoner. Oh. Yeah, that's that's Same our yeah. aim. It's like when I was on the tube this morning, um, I put my bag down and the straps were kind of like just dangling out, and people were standing on them, and I was like. See, that's a problem I need to solve. <laughs> I love it. Such a problem solver. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we we're going to be doing. Um, and then, obviously, you know, with all of these different relationships that we, we start, uh, there's also a lot of travel in my life as well. So, just learning how to manage those relationships from the other side of the world, it's, it's not the easiest thing, to be honest. Um, I think re- remote working has pros and cons. Uh, in one sense, it's amazing that I that I can kind of work from wherever I am. Um, sometimes you lose connection. Mm-hmm. Uh, connection is so important when you meet someone in in real life. There's something about um, being in in the same place, uh, in the same space. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we've had that with with every single person that we've worked with in, in terms of like our, our product range. Uh, so remote work, working, I, I see it as a way to possibly kind of inspire new products and just it's, it's my own story that I'm going on and, and who knows, like I might run into like some other like person who's making this and like I, Zach Hill and I always give this example like imagine the guy in Peru who's making wooden chairs but like he's struggling to sell them. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like how can, how can we help him that's kind of like one of the things we keep on saying we've got this joke about this this guy in peru that makes wooden chairs (laughs) 
So yeah, um, the cons to, to remote working are uh, the disconnection that you have because mm-hmm. everything's over email, right, or, mm-hmm. or, or video chat or whatever. And uh, and that guy in Peru with the chairs doesn't probably have FaceTime. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. True, and so you, so traveling is important to be able to find yourself in, in places where you can meet someone like that. But um, but I think another big thing is 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 loneliness. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think co-working spaces are nice, uh, but in a city like London, you, you, you're kind of like just by yourself, like traveling and, and sitting around at different cafes and hotels and co-working spaces, and, and that can be a little bit lonely. So I think there's something quite beautiful about like uh, being able to put a, a, a group of people around you when when you're remote work, uh, so like kind of putting these healthy p- parameters in, in place to just keep you happy. Mm. Very good. I really like that. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking to us, Ash. We really enjoy it, and I, I kind of feel like it's going to happen anyway. But I wish you all the success in the world with with Beacon and Armor. Thank Love you the so story. much. And thank you so much for watching. And please do not forget to like and subscribe.